All right, we're going to look at the Iranian restart movement. This is really important, and I saw this go really, really viral, too. I was aware of the restart movement. I was aware that something like half the population is below the age of 25 in Iran. The mullahs are very unpopular. It didn't even used to be an Islamic country. They want to modernize. They were building nuclear reactors before the Shah was taken out. And so what's really happened to Iran? Why did the CIA and others actually help put the mullahs into power, the leftist CIA? And how could this change? So what started it all was spies and sleeper cells, a look into the Iranian threat that, that you covered a while back. I'd also covered it before even mainstream news did. And then get us into restart in this big exclusive interview that's on Infowars.com that we're going to post to the top of the page uh, right now so folks can find the whole interview. We're going to play some excerpts and tell us about how you went to California to interview the leader who is the main opposition group. Well, it's interesting, Alex. You said uh, half the population is under 28, and the restart movement is very young. It's uh, pretty much made up of young people and women, lots of women doing a lot of courageous things under the regime. And they reached out to me after that article and said they're being censored for two years and no one's reporting on them. The mainstream media is ignoring them. And so we responded, and I ended up calling the leader and Syed Mohammed. And we spoke, and I was very taken by their movement. They are full of love, I would say, very Christian-like, although they would claim that they are non-religious. They want a government based on reason and logic. But I think they wouldn't mind if I described them as Sufi, which is sort of mystical Islam, more like Christianity going inward, cleansing the self, working on the self, accepting and loving others. The point is they want a free, open country. They want a modern industrialization. And they don't want the religious dictatorship of the uh, of the Shiite mullahs. True. And they're also worried about Reza Pahlavi. They're worried that Reza Pahlavi is owned by England and Russia. And they're sick of being under the thumb of England and Russia. They even come out and say in the interview that they want a 1776 to finally be free from England. And That's Russia. right. Anglo-American oil, the British Empire ran them. Then when they kicked them out, even though they were being pro-America, they sent in Kermit Roosevelt and others with Operation Ajax to overthrow Mohammed Mosaddegh. So it's the same story over and over again. Yes, that's how they feel, and they're sick of it. They want independence. They want freedom. Because they um, were always a wealthy, secular country with the women going to college and, and fashion and science. And they just and then now we've put them under the worst Islamic rule. Yes. A lot of people even suggest that Thomas Jefferson was very inspired by Cyrus the Great when he was drafting the Constitution. And when you compare the two... They're very similar. The best thing that we have that Cyrus the Great didn't, I think, is that ours is protected by God, so it can't be taken away. And we have the right to bear arms, which is what he gets to talk about in the interview, which is also very interesting. But this is this is I mean, this is like the, the the first or second. It's one of the top opposition groups. Well, I would say it is the leading opposition group, but they're the only ones being censored. I've been flooded by thousands of tweets and contacts from this movement, and I've only heard one from someone for Reza Pahlavi and the Muajideen. I don't think anyone really cares for the Mujahideen except radical Islam. Exactly. So so what's happening is the same old global power brokers want to overthrow the Iranian mullahs but put something, uh, another globalist thing. Absolutely, in. absolutely. And they're nationalists. And it's just like Trump said, we stand with nationalists, not globalists. And that's exactly what they are. They are completely behind Trump. And they, I would say their language about Trump, they sound just like us. They sound like American patriots. They sound like they understand the whole movement that Trump is behind. Well, because Iran wasn't like this until the last, uh, really, 80 years or so. Right. And, and then it's been a battle with Islam coming in, trying to take over, and then the Shah. And because, like you said, mainstream media wants to ignore this. They don't want to hear about the real Iranian opposition. If you really want to topple the mullahs, you've got to talk to the real opposition. Infowars.com. Newswars.com. Okay, segueing, and, and for folks that, 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 that just joined us, recap, uh, Mr. Reese, about your report going out to California. And let's start getting into these amazing clips and the whole restart uh, movement, how how important it is. Uh, Greg Reese, InfoWars.com reporter, continue. So for two years, they've been trying to get someone in the American media to interview their leader, uh, Sayed Mohammed Hosseini. And so and they they were actually tweeting out his phone number in, in many, many ways. And we were actually the first ones to do it. And so we called him and we set up an interview and we met him in uh, Anaheim, California, where we met him and some friends of his. And we had a Another person there helping to translate for us. And it was actually quite amazing. His answers kind of blew my mind. And he, he spoke like an American patriot. And, and then shortly after that, I heard President Trump's speech at the UN talking about nationalists, not globalists. And 
Make America Great is suddenly making a lot more sense to me. I think it's 1776 worldwide. I think that's it. And he says that too, doesn't he? He says that, yeah. Well, I mean, I've heard of the restart movement. They just want a modernized, regular, secular country. And, and the polls show, like you said, half the public uh, population is under the age of 28. Yeah, and they're fed up with radical Islam because that's not who they are. And they, they know that the world thinks that that's who they are. And when I asked him a question about radical Islam, when I was editing it, I noticed there was almost like hurt feelings, like they've like they're sick of that. They're sick of people thinking that they're that and they're not. Well, that's what runs their country. Yes, absolutely. Let's go to this first clip here. Uh, this is uh, where they talk about President Trump and, and they talk about the parallels there. And then we'll get into their view on the Second Amendment. But this is just a you know, view into the world. Uh, here it is. What does Restart think of President Donald Trump? My response to your question is something I'd like to say to the American people. The American people must know that before Trump became president, he already had fame and money. So he is not after these two things. He wants to make America great and has only one request. He wants the people to show love. And Restart knows how hard it was for him to get elected. Because every media and every leader did not want him to win. And we knew when this man became president that two things would happen. The first thing is that the leaders of the world would now have to speak with their heads, not with money. The second is that turmoil would happen between leaders because Trump would expose them and their lies. So I repeat, Trump is not after money or fame. He wants his name to be remembered. And for his name to be remembered, he has to say what he sees so that the people will trust him. And if he was dishonest, everything you see happening now would not have happened. Hit pause right there. Back, this guy makes perfect sense. Because Trump's real. That's what I always said. Trump's real. His name's destroyed if he doesn't deliver. Yeah. And he's going to be physically destroyed. And the enemy's coming after him because they know it's real. Yeah. That doesn't mean he's God. Doesn't mean he can do everything right. But this guy totally gets it. Trump is totally committed. And if he wasn't real, you wouldn't be seeing this. No. Let's continue. And for his name to be remembered, he has to say what he sees so that the people will trust him. And if he was dishonest, everything you see happening now would not have happened. Everyone wants to bring him down because they do not want the truth to be exposed. I've told my people to only trust President Trump and Pompeo. And we believe that Trump is doing something that will destroy the Iranian regime. And millions of restart people believe this. I have told the people that President Trump is like Ronaldo, the famous soccer player. He looks one way, but shoots the other. To understand what Trump is doing, we must look at the score. How many goals he has scored. One of his goals was North Korea. The second goal was the embargo on Iran. Now the government is scared. Third goal, getting close to Russia and to get Iran away from its claw. Fourth goal, 
was getting countries to pay America fairly. There are many other goals that I could talk about. So this shows how Trump and the nationalist movement all over the world is exploding. I've known about Restart for years. Very exciting. I know it's one of the in the top two groups. Like you said, the other group is backed by the British and the globalists, and we don't want that. But obviously, anything's better than mullahs at this point. Yeah, I agree. I would have thought uh, before my research that Reza Pahlavi was a good option because, like you say, in the 70s, it was really good. But everyone's telling me that they just want freedom, and that's globalist. And it's interesting. There's a group now called Farage Guard and just appeared – September for the first time out of nowhere and they are uh, the new opposition that the mainstream media is pushing and it's really only made up of 40 people all exiles and they are claiming that the only solution is to get Reza Pahlavi in there and it just stinks of a globalist setup. All right we're here talking to Greg Reich about his restart interview with the leader of the main Iranian opposition you don't get this on other shows obviously. But let's go to this next clip there's so many of these clips Infowars breaks the censorship window uh, they model themselves after Cyrus and, and, and this empire, kind of the ethos of Iran, kind of like George Washington's ours, or Roland is French, or Arthur uh, is 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 uh, British. Explain the the the, the mythos uh, or the uh, kind of like the Jewish people. You know, you would say that it would be uh, somebody like Abraham, or it would be somebody uh, like Moses. Tell us about Cyrus. In my research in the in the last video I did about the history of Persia, Cyrus the Great came after the fall of Babylon, was the founder of the first Persian dynasty, and what he's known for mostly is he created something very similar to what we have in America as far as uh, civil rights for people, where people were allowed to practice whatever religion they wanted, they were allowed to keep their languages and keep their cultures um, I believe the Bible talks a bit about Cyrus and the Jews loved him for this because he was very open and accepting as opposed to the caliphate, which wants to put everyone under Islamic rule. And in Persia, it's been basically the two things back and forth. It's been the ideas of Cyrus, which is freedom of the individual, and then collectivism or whatever you want to call radical Islam, a brute brutality. And, and so restart is modeling itself after, after that ancient renaissance. That and the American Constitution. They're very clear that they want a First and Second Amendment and then they want to base, yes, a combination of the both, Cyrus the Great and the U.S. Constitution. Well, that sounds like a good opposition group. And, like, again, I follow some of what happens in Iran. I've known about Restart for years. But like you said, it never gets attention. No. They're completely censored, whereas Farash Guard and the Mujahideen are being talked about in the mainstream media as if they're the only two options. And Mujahideen is just another radical Islam. Absolutely. There's nothing appealing to them, uh, to anyone. And the other group's kind of like a Soros thing. The other group completely appears like a globalist setup to just put Russia and England back in power or keep them in power, whichever. And they've never known freedom, I guess, except for maybe a thousand years ago, you know, back in the days of Cyrus the Great. And they, that's, they want freedom just like every person. Yeah, how long? And none of it against Russia, but it's right on their borders so you get why. But going back to Tsarist, a couple hundred years, Russia was kind of dominating. Then the Brits came in. Yeah. And I would imagine it's oil. You know, that's been the game in there for a long time is to take their resources. But why shouldn't they be able to control their own resources? Well, that'll just sell them to everybody. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. I want to go out to break with this clip. Well, we're going to come back with what is Cyrus Empire will look like. A radical Islam clip, refugee crisis. These are really great. But the full interview is now on Infowars.com. And I forget the exact title. We can pull it up. Like Meet the Donald Trump of uh, Iran. That's right. Meet the Donald Trump of Iran. There it is, full interview. Meet the Donald Trump of Iran, whose movement has a shot of reviving the Persian nation. I think my headline was, that's what we didn't go with it, is uh, whose movement has a shot at making Iran great again. Yes, and that is their, they are using that logo. If you go on Twitter, you'll see that everywhere. MEGA, make Iran great again. That's what really first caught my eye about it, because... Well, how can you be run by globalists or by some party and then not have your... I mean, of course your nation's not going to be great. Right. The nation has to be run by the people, its values, its culture, and then projecting out with their vision and, and their plan. Yes, absolutely. Because if you don't have a nation state and you don't have some type of ethos or, or myth, then you have nothing. Absolutely. I would even say it all starts with the family, and then from the family, the community. And if we can't control our own families and our own community, then we are not free. That's what I'm fighting for. Well, Mr. Reese, you've done a great job. Doug Hagman's coming up, too. But I'm going to finish up with some of these clips. Then get to the vice Greg Reese is our guest coming up. Doug Hagman takes over. Huge news on the free speech front. Greg, go ahead and 
recap about the Iranian um, main opposition group. So for two years, the group Restart has been censored from the mainstream media, while the Farash Guard, which is pretty much Reza Pahlavi, and the Mujahideen have been offered by the mainstream media as the only two options. And the reason that's important is Iran's always a global crisis. If you go into the whole history, globalist forces help put uh, Ayatollah Khomeini in. That's been documented and actually removed the Shah because he was going the way, uh, again, even though he'd been a puppet at first, he was going the way of Mosaddegh actually trying to give the money and power to the people again to, to, out of national pride. Yeah. And out of the, want, we want the Persians to be great again. So, so we're really going back to that same point yet again. Absolutely. And my research, uh, shows me that, that, um, Reza Pahlavi's father was actually taking down the Sufi churches and elevating the mullahs as if he was setting up the 79 revolution because he was strengthening all the mullahs and weakening the Sufi churches, which is the more passive and peaceful and loving churches of Islam over there. That's right. The more tolerant ones. Yes, absolutely. Which is exactly what Cyrus the Great Empire claims that they want is to be tolerant and to be uh, open to all cultures and allow the person to pursue the the their own heart, which is really what I think every American wants. So it's a very libertarian renaissance based system. Let's play a few more of these clips. The full interview is on InfoWars.com. Folks, you really should share it. They don't want to get out there. Doug Agman's coming up here in just a few minutes. Uh, right now, let's go to uh, what the Cyrus Empire would look like. Here it is. Your plan is to have democratic elections with at least five different political parties to choose from. Do you plan on taking a leadership role until there are elections? How does this work? I want to turn it upside down. I want to give them a 1776. 76. I want to bring a 4th of July so that Iran is free from British and Russian control. I want to draft a new constitution influenced by Cyrus the Great. Then I want to introduce 10 to 15 different parties to the people of Iran so that they can choose. Now, hit pause real quick. Also, if you study the whole history of this, and nothing against Islam and all the rest of it, but you know, they invaded in the last 500, 600 years. This guy looks Iranian. He looks Persian. If you look at the Shiites, they're all literally related to Muhammad. They're from the Middle East. So it's like it's an outside group. Yeah. It's a royalty. The caliphate, I would say. It's a royal Islamic. Because, again, people don't know. If you're a Shiite, you've got to be related to Muhammad. Yeah. So they're, that's why they all look the same. Yeah. If, if they're, they're not even Iranian. Right, exactly. You imagine how much that pisses the Iranians off? Yeah, absolutely. You can see it in his face in the interview the passion and the anger that he has that his people have been taken like this unfairly. Well, let's continue. And the people will choose five of these parties to represent them. Next is to create a judicial system from the very beginning. If any of the parties disagree with any of the new laws, you will not succeed. For example, the right to bear arms. This is the first law under Cyrus the Great Empire. When Iran has the right to bear arms, the government can no longer disrespect the people. Now the government must lead with wisdom and knowledge, not with force and killing. If this doesn't happen, I will not return to Iran. They can go and do whatever the hell they want. Other oppositions are trying their best to keep this from happening. They don't want the Iranian people to have guns. They want to seize control of defenseless Iranian people and guide them towards the wrong path. Exactly. He's smart. The globalists have already primed it now. Remove it, bring in your Soros control. But that's perfect sense. You want all these diverse groups armed because then one gang group can't get centralized control. Yeah. And, and like you said, you go back over a thousand years ago, it was almost 2000. 
The Iranians were one of the first groups to put it in their law that everybody could have weapons. Absolutely. Well, I um I only have one person who's been contacting me from Iran who is against restart, and their argument was this. Their argument was we shouldn't have guns. Only through peace and love will we have freedom. And but the I, government's going to have them. Right. And it, I think there are some American liberals who are into this idea, too, that if we just lay down our guns and open our arms to the world, that everyone's going to just... That's like not locking your door at night. Or when I'm peace and love, I'm going to leave my car running at the mall. Right. It's just not realistic. You're just living in la-la land if you think that's the case. Maybe when evil is completely eradicated from the world, which may may, may never happen. Maybe then, but not now. Greg Reese, great job with your report. The full report's on InfoWars.com. It's powerful. Everyone should take it. Email it to everyone they know because we're trying to help other nation states as well. And it makes me excited, just like America getting free or the U.K. getting free or other countries pulling out of globalism. This is exciting. Yes. And they're really lucky to have a movement like this that's already in the lead. I think so. Obviously for real. Yeah. God bless you, man. Thank you, sir. Great job.